Hi, welcome back to my channel. Nice to see you. In the last video, we installed the EDS6 and KNX Virtual and also got to know to the dashboard of the EDS6. So we now know where we can find what. And in this video, we want to take a look at the project window to see how we can edit our KNX projects, for example, create our building structure and our topology. And we will do all of this after the intro. So I'm back here in the EDS 6 and in the last video we created this industry building project. I will open it now and this is the page you will always see when you create a project and open it for the first time. There in the middle here we have the buildings window and on this area here we later on have other windows such as group addresses, the topology, etc. But let us start here at the top. Here in this green area, we can open multiple projects and then we will see them here. So for example, if I open this practice project here, you can see I have here my industry building project and here my practice project. And if I don't open a project, well, then I can see the dashboard. Down below here, we have two menu bars. This second menu bar here, I can also customize to my needs. So I can customize this toolbar and for example, add other options here to the toolbar so that I can find them quickly. Down below here, we have currently opened the buildings page where I can create the structure of my building. This doesn't have any effect on the functionality of my network, but rather it is for documentation purpose so that I can find my devices more quickly and later on for the automatically created report, this is also used. And down below here, you can see, for example, that we have the line 1.1 and some other informations, for example, that we have currently selected the buildings page. On the right hand side, we have this little window which we can open and close. And this always looks the same, but depending on which object you have marked currently, you have different properties here. So here I can set up some specific settings to this building. I can add a comment and get some informations. Then we have a find and replace function. We can open up multiple workspaces. So workspaces are predefined window orientations where we can quickly switch between them. Then we have a to-do list, the pending operations, there we can see the downloads onto the KNX bus and then we have an undo history. I will stick for the properties for now and the first thing that I want to do in this project is that I want to create my building structure. Therefore I click here on this little arrow because I don't want to add a building part but instead some floors. So I will create the ground floor and also the upper floor, for example. Now that this is done, you can find them here. And inside of these floors, I can now add some rooms. So for example, the tea kitchen. Then you can see I already get this kitchen predefined here. If I click the tabulator page, you can see it is also used here for this use drop down menu. And this also doesn't have an effect on the functionality, but this use drop down menu here is for the icon that you can see here. So if I click this tea kitchen and go to settings and change the use, for example, to bedroom, you can see the only thing that really changes is here this little icon back to kitchen. Then I will add an office. Also here I get this. Also here I get this tooltip. Now I have an office and then the upper floor. For example, I create a toilet. There I will specify the use by myself. So for example, bathroom. And now we have the toilet, a tea kitchen and an office. 
And what you can do now is that you create the building structure based on your home, for example. Now that we have finished this building page, let us take a look at how we can add devices to it. But first of all, I want to open a new panel, the topology. Now you can see if I open it with this way, we get two windows, the buildings window, which is still present and the topology. I will close it for now. But what you can also do if you don't need the buildings page now is you can click here and change this window to topology. This is also possible. And what we can see here is that we have an IP area, a twisted pair line, and up here we have the backbone. Now what we can also see is in the settings to which media type this backbone area and line is set to. So the backbone is set to IP, the area is also set to IP and the line here is set to twisted pair. If I change it for example to radio frequency, you can also see it here that the icon changes. But I stick here to twisted pair. Then we can also add some comments, get some informations, etc. The topology now is really important for the functionality because the topology represents how you have installed your KNX network. In this case, we have a twisted pair line with an IP area. You might have another line, for example, an outdoor line with twisted pair, which is connected via IP, so via an IP router to the other twisted pair line. We will stick to one line for now. We will also see in a later video how we can use multiple lines and also the IP area. But for now, I will only work in this twisted pair line, which is fully sufficient, for example, for small projects. There we simply have the twisted pair line. We connect all of our devices together and then they can communicate with each other. And based on your topology, the KNX devices get their physical address. So you can see the twisted pair line has the number 1.1. So all the devices within the twisted pair line get the address 1.1 point device number. And this is what I will do now. I will open up here the catalogs page and there I will scroll down here to KNX Association. And there we have it. And here are all the devices that are simulated by KNX Virtual. And there I want to start with a push button sensor and a switching actuator. So therefore I will sort it and here we have the clicks which is a simulated push button sensor. I will add it to my twisted pair line. So first of all it gets downloaded and then it gets inserted. And then we also need a switching actuator which we can find here 2.4 switching and we also insert it to our twisted pair line. So now also the switching actuator is added to the twisted pair line. And when we take a look at the twisted pair line and I go here to devices, we can see that both devices are associated to the line. So they get their physical address 1.1.1 and 0.2. And I can also change it if I open up this properties page here, for example, 20. We'll go back to two. But we can also see that those devices aren't associated to any room for now. And this is what I want to change now. Therefore, I open up here the buildings page. So I changed catalogs to buildings. And then I also want to add a corridor to my ground floor. Therefore, here on this button and then directly here on corridor. And in this corridor, I want to have my main cabinet. Therefore, again, here on the arrow, cabinet and main cabinet. And inside of this main cabinet, I then want to insert my switching actuator to it. So therefore, I will go back here to the topology. And now I simply drag and drop the devices into their associated room. So for example, the push button sensor into the office and the switching actuator into the main cabinet. I'll quickly go back and into the main cabinet. Now you can see that both devices are associated to the corresponding room. Therefore, I can either close topology or building, which way you prefer to work. And now if we take a look at the push button sensor, so the clicks, 
we can already see the group objects this device has. So here in this case, we have an eight fold push button sensor, therefore eight group objects with a switching on off function enabled. And in the switching actuator, the same thing. There we have eight channels, which we can use for switching. And therefore we have eight group objects for now. Now, for example, what is still missing is a feedback object. So for example, that on the push button sensor, we can see via LED if the light is turned on or turned off. This is, for example, pretty useful if you have switchable sockets. Therefore, I go here to my push button sensor and into the parameters. And there I can specify the functions of each channel, so of each push button. And if we go here to channel one, we can change the function of it. And there we have switching feedback black red, so a simulated LED. And now we can see that the group objects, sort them by number, there we have now two group objects for our first channel, one for switching and one for the feedback. But in the switching actuator, we still don't have a feedback object. So therefore, I also go here to the parameters to set up my device. And there you can see under channel one, we can enable a feedback object here. So now here we also have two group objects. So this is how you insert your KNX devices into your KNX project. Pretty easy, isn't it? What you can do now is that you create your own little project, maybe the building structure based on your home. And you can also add multiple devices for now. And in the next video, we want to take a look at how we can program our first function in KNX. So how we can turn the light on and off via our push button sensor and the switching actuator. I hope you enjoyed the video so far. If so, consider a like and subscribe to the channel to get notified for new videos. I will see you in the next video.